Crowder's in Detroit. NFL draft is Thursday. And on the phone is Billy Lindsay. Billy Lindsay's on the Toyota of Hollywood hotline. Shop hundreds of Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms, Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Billy Lindsay, long NHL career, including many brilliant seasons with the Panthers. He was part of the 95-96 Stanley Cup, the year of the rat, Crowder, one of my favorite uh, sports yes. memories from South Florida, the year of the rat. I've been um, well. I've been well versed about the year of the rat by a number. I tell of you what, people who missed the year of the rat—that yeah. was a special. Every now and then in sports, any sport, you get like a just a special season, and the year of the rat was that. Didn't end with the uh, trophy, but it was a special year. The start of the story is pretty violent, but I enjoy the run of it. Violent on behalf of the rat that got yeah, knocked yeah. across the <laughs> locker room. <laughs> Anyway, Billy Lindsay, you hear him on the Panthers radio broadcast with Doug Plagans. You see him on NHL Network. He's joining us now. Hello, Billy. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Everything good? Yeah, you got to feel good, right, about yesterday if you're a Panthers fan or former Panther like yourself because I think everyone was kind of a little nervous. No, no matter how good the Panthers were during the season, Tampa just always kind of seems to have their number. So you had to feel good coming off of yesterday's game. They played well. There was some trepidation. You lost a couple of playoff series against Tampa Bay. You seem to have the upper hand going into this series. How is it going to play out? Yet, yeah, as you mentioned, had that terrific regular season, and they were true to form. They came out and played a really stingy, strong defensive style that Paul Maurice has ingrained into this team. Kucherov, the star on the other team that might be the MVP of the league, they shot him down, made, made it physical. This Panther team, they're a mean bunch, man. They play angry. It's fun. And uh, when they got that anger, uh, sort of that venom kind of running through their veins and they're going to commit to the defensive side of the puck, they're a beast to play against. They, they're hard to play against. They do what they needed to do. They get the game one victory. And the most important thing going into these playoffs, uh, what allowed them to do down the stretch is get everyone healthy. Ekblad was back in the lineup. Carter Verhage game came back for game 82. He scored the first game of the playoffs. Uh, so you, at the start, you never know how this ends because it's a battle, but they're a pretty healthy group and they were clicking pretty good in game one. Billy, I don't know if it hits too close to home because you did play for the Panthers, but is this the best roster they've ever had? It's it's up there, yeah, it's for sure. I would I, I would agree with that statement. Over the last couple of years, last year, what they did, and even more com even more complete with some more depth this year. It, you get these Stanley Cup windows for teams. It's nice that the, that we finally got here. Uh, you look back at some of the teams that have won over the years, with uh, Chicago starting out, and then to Pittsburgh, and most recently Tampa Bay. But you get. When all this core group ages, the Barkoff, Ekblads, and some of your star young talent kind of grows up together and you surround it with some really good pieces. Bill Zito, the GM, has done a done a nice job. Uh, so this is, yes, I would agree with that, Channing, that this is our, our most complete roster. And this is the window. Uh, this is four years straight in the playoffs. You've probably got another good three, four years that this window is going to be open, but when you're in this position, you got to take advantage of it be, because these moments are fleeting. And we saw them get to the Stanley Cup final last year, but the expectations this year have to be the same thing. Try and get back there and win it again. You've played for a lot of coaches, Billy, and you've been around a lot of teams, teammates. It seems to me, and I've never played hockey, but it seems to me like Paul Maurice is perfectly suited for this roster. Am I, am I correct in that? I would, yeah, Paul Maurice, he was a head coach at 25 in the NHL. He knows how to adapt over the years. He's been doing it for so long, and he, he, he lets this team be themselves. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of character in that dressing room. Some of it's comical, goofy. Some of it's really serious. Uh, there's all kinds of different personalities, but when you bring them all together, they're bought in, and they're one, and Paul Maurice has been able to, with all his years of experience and in pro sports and Channing, you can speak to this as, as a professional athlete, as a head coach, 
with the players that the money that these players make and the different attitudes, you have to have, you have to be able to tap into 20. It's not like junior or college where you say jump and they say how high in the NHL it's why. So you have to have the ability to tap into the reservoir of each player and kind of understand what makes them tick. How do I get this player to go? And it all, it goes all the way down the line. So there might be a different set of rules for, for different players, or he might be hard on one guy or another guy. I might, I might need to put a little extra love on him. And so Paul Maurice, with all this experience that he's had has been able to negotiate. He's got a good feel for just letting the personality shine and knowing how to tap into each player and get the most out of them. And when you look at a coach and you look at a season, did they get the most out of their players? Did they maximize their potential? And that's what Paul Maurice has been able to do with this group. And speaking about that, because you play, you know, you know, you know, hockey, you know, better than anybody I know. Do you have to, that, that style, that physical style of play, that Paul ball is what, uh, is what Josh Chappelle, one of the guys that come on a lot, tells us like Paul Ball, the way he plays, that physical style play you're speaking of. Do you have to acquire that through trade, free agency, draft, or can you teach a guy how to play this style of hockey? Uh, you you can you you can show it how it is, but it's up to, you have to have the you have to have the, you have to have the players. Uh, Sam Bennett's simply mean. He's nasty. Uh, he doesn't like people. <laughs> he's, he's out there. He's gonna, he's, <laughs> Uh, so, and, uh, Matthew Kachuk is, he's going to be in the middle of everything. He just wants to be in the middle of everything. Uh, he's going to be talking trash, doing whatever. It's just part of, part of his style. That, that stuff can't be taught. It can rub off to other players, but it comes down to if everyone's doing, everyone's working so hard. So the guy beside me is, is part of that. It, it can rub off onto the, some of the, uh, the other players and, you just realize, okay, I, I can be physical. I got players that, that if something happens, that are going to be there to back me up. And when you become a, when you go from good average to good or good to great is just when you realize that the guy beside you is just giving so much and you're afraid to let your teammate down. Uh, there's more of a fear of not, not what you're going to do and let yourself down. But man, that guy's working so hard beside me. I, I just, I, if I play bad tonight. I'm gonna. I, I don't want to. I don't want to let the guy beside me down. And uh, that that's kind of what this team has. But that team toughness, that whole style, you have to. That's up to the GM and the coach to identify players that kind of fit that role. I would say that's more of just knowing and understanding what kind of personality that they're going to bring to the dressing room because a lot of teams don't have it. Uh, you. Even Toronto struggled in game one again. Uh, that's been their problem for years. Uh, been known as a team that can't really get through the grind at, at times. So you, it, it, some of it can be taught, but very, very little. A lot of it is just the self-nature of the human being, just just being who the, being, being mean. And uh, we, got a lot of, we got a lot of that on this Panther group. Uh, and there's a lot of toughness to, to go around. One player like Gustav Forsling is not the toughest guy in the world. But as far as fighting, but uh, you you put that guy in front of a slap shot, he'll block it, and he'll come back the very next shift. To, so it's kind of that that mindset. There's there's different kinds of of being tough, and this Panther team has all kinds of different players that fit that bill. Real quick before we run out of time, Billy, uh, we all agree Panthers are stacked, and this could be the season. Which team though in the East scares you the most? Uh, on our, but this, if it does end up and it goes to the second round, uh, Boston. So, so we got a phone ringing in here. Uh, <laughs> Boston, right. the way that they play, is going to be another heck of a series. Uh, one sec, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Boston. Where are you at? You, LA, NHL Network. Where are you? Uh, no, I just got home from the NHL Network, oh. so I just kind of had some lunch and just walked in my door. My dad is here with us, and he's he's older and he's got his ringtone on. He's about I was going to say you have a, that. Shirt. That sounded like a, a a phone from 1983 ringing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but anyway, quickly, I know you're running out of time. The the, the toughest uh, 
we, we play Boston in the regular season. Uh, they beat us every game, but every game, a couple of games went to overtime. Every game's a one goal game. Uh, they want revenge from last year. They've got a style that is very similar to ours. And if, if we lock horns again against Boston, uh, Carolina is really good on the other side, but if we beat Tampa Bay and Boston beats the Leafs, that Boston uh, Panther series, it went seven games last year. I would not be surprised if it didn't go seven again this year. It's that's If it gets to that point, that's the one team that kind of scares me in the East. Yeah, that one will be fun as hell. If if they match up again, round two, that will be fun as hell. Billy Lindsay, hopefully uh, this goes on for a long time and uh, we can have you on as the uh, playoffs progress. We appreciate you making time for us, Billy. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great day, and uh, yeah, we'll see, you see how it plays out. Appreciate it. We'll see you there tomorrow. Billy Lindsay, the blonde bomber. I got my new favorite player. Who? Sam Bennett. The way he described Sam Bennett is so perfect. You know what I, I was thinking? Because he was talking about how it's one of those teams where you don't want to let your teammate down. Reminds me of the late 80s Hurricanes. Because you hear that all the time from Michael Irvin and Randall Hill. You know, where it was like, yeah. didn't matter about the coaches. Gino will tell you. Like, didn't matter about the coach. It was You didn't want to let down your teammates. <laughs> and when he said that about Sam Bennett, I was thinking to myself, yeah, you know what? I think you are going to put in 100% because apparently you don't want a person who hates humans angry at you. <laughs> he was trying to find a way to say it better, but he couldn't. Sam Bennett doesn't like humans. That's my was man. Right. Was a, a great jersey. lie. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a jersey. I love that.